What's up everyone, Justin from Make Supply and this video will be a build along tutorial for making a leather playing cards case in four different design options. The one we will be making as a model in this video will be this one here. If you'd like to purchase this template, it is available in two different versions. One as an instant download print at home PDF template set that comes with all these designs, as well as a physical acrylic template set that again comes with all the designs and all the holes marked for stitching if you would like to use them. These are both available in our web store and our Etsy shop, which are listed below in the video description. There's also a link to a blog post that'll have some finished pictures and some uh, links to all the tools that we used in this video to put this together. Uh, let's get started with inventory. Okay, uh, let's start with inventory. If you've never seen any of my videos before, I'll do a run through of everything that we're gonna use in this project. And if you have the more advanced version of any of these tools, feel free to use them. Um, okay, so I'm going to do the templates. I'm gonna go through the templates in the section after this. So for now, I'm just gonna put them off to the side. Using a uh, 18 inch cork back ruler, number two X-Acto knife, a wing divider for marking stitching holes, um, CS Osborne scratch all, two John James needles, um, some 0.8 millimeter tiger thread in, I think it's just dark brown, Saiwa five millimeter diamond stitching chisels, um, six prong and two prong, some barge cement, a rotary hole punch for punching the holes for the snap, there is a version of this template. If you don't have any hardware, you can just make a flap version of it, which I'll show you right here, where you don't need any snaps. So if you're doing this version, you don't have to worry about the snaps. Um, for doing the snap version, I'm using these line, uh, line 20, I believe, um, just brass uh, short post snaps from Buckle Guy a generic mallet from Amazon, a wood slicker for slicking edges, a number one edge beveler, some gum tragacanth, piece of sandpaper, oh sorry, piece of canvas, a piece of sandpaper, and I think that's it. I will also be using a um, a hand press for setting these snaps, which I will show later. And if I forgot anything, all of this will be listed in the blog post for this project on our website, which is linked below. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this off and we will look at the templates. Okay, so let's go over these uh, templates and then we'll get started. So first the PDF, uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, this is a paid template. I've done a bunch of free ones lately and have to switch it up. And, you know, daddy has to pay some bills around here. So if you are interested in purchasing this template, it is available in the link in the description below in this video. It'll go to my website or to my Etsy store and it's an automatic download. So you can, uh, you know, pause the video and come right back. So first let's go over the PDF. It'll come out in three pages like this. And with this, template, you have the option for four different versions of this playing cards case design. The only difference in all of these is one, the design of the, the lid closing, as you see here. And what we're going to do, we're going to create the uh, another version. So we'll be creating the third version of this. And also, if you don't have any hardware, there is a version where it's just a flap design like this. Okay, so this will, the first two pages are all of the top flap designs. 
and on the third page is the rest of the bottom part, uh, the rest of the body here that, that folds over, which is the same for all of them, the gosset, which is the same for all of them, uh, the strap for if you are doing the flat version, and this little connector pad, which we're gonna use to glue these two pieces together. We have to do that because this template is too long as a piece of paper. It's too long to put on um, one piece of paper and print out, so we have to connect it, okay? I'm trying to reduce this glare here. I know that's annoying. Okay, so that'll make more sense in the next step when we put it together. As far as the acrylic versions, Again, I have these also available on my website and my Etsy store. There's also a fourth one that I don't have here right now. But, you know, it has all the holes marked through and you get all versions of the template as one piece, they're not cut. And then the gosset and the strap piece for the strap version. And like I mentioned, that's available in my Etsy store and on my website. The leather we're gonna be using is a three to four ounce Wicked and Craig Buck Brown harness leather. Um, this, this template has a little bit of give, so if you need to use a little bit thicker leather than three to four ounce, you should be fine. Um, I don't know how much thicker than like five or six ounce would be workable, but you, you can go a little bit heavier or a little bit lighter and everything will still work out okay. Okay, so I am going to move this stuff over and we will get started on the PDF. All right, let's get started on this PDF here. So as I mentioned in the previous section, we're not gonna be cutting out all of these pieces. We're only gonna cut out the ones that we wanna work with. So I'm going to choose the first one here, this just um, rounded rectangle corner here, because that's the only one that I haven't made yet. So I'm gonna be cutting out this piece on the first page. I can move the second page out of the way and I will be cutting out the piece B here on the third page, the gosset and the AB connector piece. That's it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'll probably fast forward this video cause cutting paper is boring, but let's get started. Okay, so I went ahead and cut out the top part, piece A, piece B, the gosset, and the connector pad. Um, I didn't, you don't have to cut the connector pad perfectly. We're just gonna be using the lines, the black lines on here to connect these two pieces together with glue. All right, so let's connect the pieces. So I'm gonna grab some of my barge cement here. And find a little piece of something to use. Okay, I'm just gonna use this little piece of leather here. And what I'm gonna do is put the connector piece. And then I'm going to take piece A and line it up with those black lines right to the middle, just like that. Glue it down. Got to pick a better angle on the camera here. Like that, under, and then I'm gonna put piece B and put it, line it up right against the middle line as well. And then we'll have a full connected template and I'll cut off that excess. Okay. 
You can also use tape to do this if you want. Alright, so I just attached the connector to piece B, and now I'm going to flip it over and do the same for A. Put a little bit more. Stuff dries out pretty fast, and then you got to have some on the other side. Okay, so as you can see now, our template is one piece, and now I'm just gonna cut off those little wings there. All right. So now we are ready to roll. We have our full template cut out and our gosset. So let's go get our leather and start this project. All right, so let's take our pieces and trace them onto our leather. If you are going to be marking stitching holes, you'll want to do that first. All these stitching holes match up perfectly here, so a way of doing this would be to mark all your holes, you know, punch them through all the way and then stitch it all together, that's fine. I'm going to not use the holes, I'm going to use the stitching irons. But I will be using these snap holes, so make sure to mark the snap holes uh, before you take the template off. So I'm also going to mark, um, you see this dotted line that resembles this cutout section on the bottom here? This is where the top of the flap will fold up to the top here when it's put together. I'm going to just mark lightly under the leather, uh, under the template on the leather, right at that section. So I know when I'm putting this together where, the, where to fold it up to, so just very lightly. I'll probably do this again after I finish tracing all the way around.
Okay, so that is my traced out main body part. Like I've said, I marked two little notches right there, just so I know when I fold it together where this part matches up. Now, you need two gossets. So don't forget, do two of these. Okay, everything's traced. So I'm going to go ahead off camera and just cut out all three of these pieces and then we will come back. Okay, so we have all three pieces cut out, two gossets and our body part. Um, so now what we're gonna do is burnish the flaps here and then burnish the inside edge of the card holder. Okay. You know, if these cuts aren't looking good, you can always take some sandpaper and straighten them up. That's good enough. Usually with smaller pieces like this, I'll use the canvas because it's a little easier to get a grip on it.
good enough for me. All right, so if you want to go crazy with burnishing, you can do that, uh, but I'm not. So let's move on. Next, we are going to have to, if you are doing the snap version like we're doing here, we're going to put our snaps down. So what I'm going to do here is grab my trusty rotary tool. and punched both holes. As you can see, this will fold over like this and then wrap around like that. Okay, so I am going to go grab my um, snap setter and then I'll bring it over here and we'll set the snaps in and then continue on. All right, got our trusty buckle guy snap setter here with our appropriate um, dies. So I'm going to go ahead and set the cap first. You can use the hand tool version of this, but if you're going to be setting any amount of snaps, I highly uh, suggest buying this. It's not that expensive and they're just incredible. You get it done so much faster. bottom.
so now we have our snap set. So let's get prepped for stitching. All right, so now let's put our grooves onto our gossets and to our body here. Uh, on the body, I'm gonna go from the little marking that I made when I was marking the uh, trace in the template all the way down. So I marked the stitching line on there, and now I'm going to mark it on both my gossets. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and, so when this is together, this flat part here is kinda of gonna fold over like you're packing a box. So I'm just gonna put a little crease into it, just like that. Just makes it easier for when you're done. Just a little crease and let it come back up. Okay, so now I'm going to glue the one side of the gosset to the back here. I know a lot of people like to start from the back and then move their way to the front when putting a gosset together, but I, I like to start from the very, you know, a nice even flush point at the front. Man, I gotta get this camera turned the right way. An even front point at the lip and then go to the back. So what you're gonna do is gonna line up your gossets like this to the edge and then I'm going to fold turn it over and we're gonna glue it like this okay so the grain side of the leather the gosset facing up the flush side of the body panel facing down. And the little flat part will be at the top, kind of reaching over the piece. Just like this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just glue the outside angle, the outside piece down. Okay, so now 
where you're going to make sure you have the right side being glued to the correct side. You don't want this to go down incorrectly. So again, line up the flesh sides, turn the gosset over, and put it in position on the body. This should be fairly easy at this point. Make sure you got a nice connection and it's nice and straight. Same thing on the other side. Flesh side, flesh side. Turn the gosset over and line it up on the edge. Okay, so I'm going to let this dry for a little bit here, and then we're going to mark our stitching holes. Okay, so I let that sit for a minute, and now we will mark our stitching holes. So what I'm going to do is turn it over, face side up, and now I'm going to walk down the line with my diamond stitching chisel. If you're using the holes that are already on here, or you can use them as a guide if you want. Uh, but I'm not doing that. I'm just going to use my stitching iron here. So I'm just going to start around here and walk down with hand pressure. You know, make sure you're not going past the end of your gosset. So I'm getting close. how easy this is to see. But I got one side of holes, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I marked my holes. I'm going to go run over to my punching station and just punch straight through just the holes that I have there using my mallet and my chisel. And then we will come back and look at it and then stitch up this section. All right, so I went ahead and punched all these through. You can see here. and now it's ready to be stitched. So I'm going to, like I always do with all my videos, I'm gonna stitch it off camera just to save some time. If you need some help with saddle stitching, I have a saddle stitching video that I did a couple years ago. Uh, it's still relevant to what I'm doing here. I'm just gonna stitch down, stitch down, and tie them off and come back. Okay, so I just went ahead and Finish stitching both sides there. And I'll cut off this extra thread here. Okay, so now is the trickiest part of the entire project. And you'll have to make a decision based on what you want to do mainly just for aesthetic reasons. So what we have to do is fold this up, this gosset onto here, and stitch this down. You're gonna have to decide if you want to punch from the back into the, so the back of the stitching is on the gosset, or putting up here and stitching so the front of the gosset is, has the front of the, uh, the, yes, the front of the gosset has the front of the stitching and then the back of the stitching is on the back of the card holder, uh, the playing cards holder. And that's the one I'm going to do. Because I feel like if you're looking at the card uh, case, you'll see the front, which is the front of the stitching, 
And then if you look, you know, you'll, you'll be able to see it from a three quarter angle, also the front of the stitching. So you'll have nice even, an even look to your stitching. Okay, so to do that, first I'm going to mark holes on, with, pre with hand pressure on the gosset. It's, you don't have to do this, but I just think it makes it a little bit easier when I'm then going through and punching. So you're gonna to wanna to kind of just splay the gosset out a little bit. You don't have to push too hard, just enough that it's flat. And then mark your holes. I'm trying to get this on the camera. Okay, it's the first side. Same thing on the other side. Just splay the gosset out a tiny bit and then walk from the top down with the stitching chisel. All right, so now we just have some hand pressure holes marked there. Now to, <clears throat> before I glue this down, I'm going to do a little creasing on these gossets just to make them a little bit more workable here. So I'm just gonna, since it's already stitched down, you can put a little bit of pressure on that and just kind of fold it using your hands, just kind of roll it forward and put a little crease. Just like that. Make sure it's even. Just enough that it kind of straightens out the gosset so it sits straight up. Okay, just like, depending on what kind of leather you're using, this will be <clears throat> more or less, if you're using really soft leather, this really won't be effective. But if you're using like a, a semi-firm leather like this, it'll really help. Same thing on the other side. Just put a little crease. Okay. And now I'm going to also put a little crease on the other side. Just by grabbing it, you can kind of see where the, the flat part here, it goes, you know, it um, hits at a 90, degree, a 90 degree angle, like right past the stitching holes. Just somewhere around there, just put a little, a little fold. Okay, just like that. All right, and it should look something like this. And now <clears throat> we will add some cement to both sides. Okay, and same thing on the other side. I'm gonna use my gosset template to kind of measure out, you know, where this will be. So, you know, I marked the, I'm, I put that little marking on the back kind of where, where the top lines up. So I'm just gonna go from there. So basically around there is the amount 
of area I need to put glue down. Oops. Same thing on the other side, just kind of <clears throat> line up my gauze hip template. So somewhere around there. Gonna let that sit for a second here. And the next part is just going to be folding up the gosset to meet the edge of the gosset right here, to meet to where we marked um, the top of the template. Let me find that template. So it's just like this. And you can see where the dotted line is and that's what we're going to fold it up to. And let's try that now. See the best way to get this on the camera here? Okay. So this will take a little finagling to get done correctly, but you know, take your time and really make sure it lines up. Alright, so that looks pretty good and lined up at the top there. And now what I'm going to do is just clamp down using hand pressure all the way down and readjusting it as it needs to be adjusted. And then once I put it down, I'm just going to give it a little push on the top. Okay, so that looks pretty good on the one side. Now I will do the other side. Okay, same thing on the other side. And this side might be a little bit more of a pain in the butt than the other one. Okay. Make sure that's nice and aligned. Look, everything looks straight. Okay. 
So as you can see, we have our gossets glued in and now we have our holes marked. Um, I'm going to go set this up over at my punching station or I might bring that over here actually just to show the next step because it's a little it's a little trickier. All right, so I went and grabbed a concrete, uh, sorry, a marble slab, and I just used this scrap leather on top to punch through. I don't like to punch on this table too much because it's pretty flimsy, but it'll be enough to, for this project. Okay, so like I mentioned, we will be punching from the inside of the gosset to the back, like that. And you're just gonna have to move you know, you gotta move the, the, the front of the project out of the way a little bit, just bend it, and then just punch through. Just make sure you're keeping your iron straight and the, the rest of the leather will move. You can move it out of the way. Just keep your iron straight. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Uh, I wish I wasn't left-handed sometimes. Um, okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna put the uh, iron into the holes that I already marked. Check everything out, make sure it's nice and straight, the iron. And then I'm just gonna go through to the back. Keep walking down the, the way. Now you're gonna have to bend the gosset out of the way or bend the front of the card holder out of the way. Line it up, make sure it's nice and straight. Punch through. This part is a lot easier when you're using just an awl and doing it the traditional way. The trickiest parts will be the last like two, uh, two or three holes. So just, you know, take your time. Okay. And we've got the holes marked on the back. Same thing on the other side. This side's a little harder without getting my hand in the way, so I'm just gonna have to do it on the side, sorry. Okay, now I have the holes punched on both sides on the back. I am now going to, like I did last time, I'm just gonna stitch these up off camera. Saddle stitch, saddle stitch, come back and we'll move on. Okay, so I went ahead and stitched both of the bottoms. And we are finished stitching and almost done.
So the last step will be to sand all the edges here and, and uh, bevel them and then burnish all the way around.
Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do the top here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there as far as burnishing. Um, if you wanna you know, do a more thorough job than I did, uh, be my guest, it'll just make it look nicer, even nicer than this one. Okay, so let's check out our finished product here. Grab your deck of cards. And you're gonna open your little flaps, put your cards in, close your flaps and snap it shut. So what I like to do as a last step kind of thing here um, is just put some creases. You know, like, like I said, if you're using three to four ounces, probably like a little bit of give in this. Um, I wanted to make sure that if anybody was using thicker leather, they could still make the project. So I like to, you know, just kind of form it to the card case, uh, to the cards that are inside by just squeezing at the bottom, it squares it off a little bit. See that, like that, and then up top too. I know where I know where the fold is, so I kind of just give it a little squeeze, front and back, give it a nice square shape. All right, and that is your finished playing cards case. Let me bring the other ones over. And there's the, um, uh, call it a Western Peak. And the one we just made, which is just oops, straight up uh, rounded rectangle. Then you have a um, rounded angle, I don't even know. And then the flap, if you don't have any hardware. So with this one, I would honestly suggest um, putting this strap maybe down a little bit further. I think this is about an inch from the top I did. It would be, it would be a little bit more beneficial if you put it down like maybe another uh, quarter inch or so. I was kind of guessing on the placement of the strap. But you can you know put it wherever you want. And that one, same deal. All right, and that will conclude our build-along tutorial for the uh, playing cards case. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can shoot me an email or leave a comment in the video comments below. Thanks for watching.